Hello, welcome to Best of the Best, playing with power series where we rate the top cards, decks, sets, and much more from a CEDH perspective. Today's video is about the top CEDH cards that desperately need a reprint. These are cards that are CEDH staples that see their fair share of play, but aren't getting the reprints they need. We decided to limit this list to the cards that are on the CEDH staples list. For those of you who don't know, the CEDH staples list is a list of cards that are most commonly seen among the decks listed in the CEDH decklist database. It keeps track of different cards' popularity over time and keeps track of the meta as it evolves. For more information, see the video in the card above. We will be doing our best to limit the cards on this list that have seen two or fewer printings. We will also do our best not to consider things like judge promos, box toppers, expeditions, or non-tournament legal cards like gold border tournament decks because those are run at such a low printing and they don't do much to increase the actual availability of a card. We won't be including anything on the reserve list for obvious reasons. We also won't be including cards that will be expensive no matter how many times they are printed. This includes things like fetch lands, rocks like Mana Crypt and Mana Vault, and so on. If you're looking to buy any of the cards mentioned today, be sure to check out our list in the description. Also, if you like this video and want to help out, give us a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. Finally, if you want to see more like this and want to be part of an amazing community, consider signing up to our Patreon. We have all kinds of offerings at multiple levels and you will get awesome benefits for your direct support. A link is in the description below, and we hope to talk to you on our Patreon-only Discord. Thanks. So, let's dive into our list. Number 10 on our list is Fire Covenant. This card is one a black and a red for an instant that reads, as an additional cost to cast this spell, pay X life. Fire Covenant deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. This card is an amazing precision board wipe that can target only the creatures you need to deal with at the cost of some life. It has seen officially only one paper printing ever in Ice Age. For those of you who don't know, Ice Age was released in June of 1995. That means there aren't a whole lot of these cards out there, and more and more are just getting ruined with age. The rise of CEDH has increased the demand for this card, and as such, could do with a proper reprint. Number 9 on our list is Mystic Remora. This card is one blue for an enchantment with cumulative upkeep one, which is, at the beginning of your upkeep, put an age counter on this permanent and then sacrifice it unless you pay its upkeep cost for each age counter on it. So basically your first upkeep you pay one, second upkeep you pay two, then three, and so on. It also reads, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four. Honestly, this card really doesn't need an introduction. Don't Feed the Fish is a slogan coined from this card, meaning don't cast spells into Mystic Remora. This is a CEDH staple that goes into every single deck running blue. This was also printed in Ice Age and has never seen a paper reprint. The surge of CEDH over the last two years has risen the price of this card from bulk to top quality uncommon. The price is rising and not seeing an end anytime soon. Number eight on our list is Noxious Revival. This card is one Phyrexian green mana, meaning you can either pay green or two life. It's an instant that reads, put target card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. Wizards admits that Phyrexian mana was a mistake and this is the only set where this type of mana exists. It was so broken that they had to end up banning a lot of its kin from other formats like Mental Misstep and Jataxian Pro. This one hasn't been banned, but has seen a big climb in price as it has never been reprinted. Number seven on our list is Demonic Consultation. This card is one black for an instant that reads, choose a card name, exile the top six cards of your library, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with the chosen name. Put that card into your hand and exile all other cards revealed this way. For those of you who are unaware, this card is commonly used in CEDH decks that want to efficiently empty their library and win the game with a lab man type effect. Now that we have three different types of lab man effects with the namesake Laboratory Maniac, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, and now Thassa's Oracle, this card creates a super compact win condition in your deck. This card was also printed from Ice Age and has never seen a reprint. Only a few years ago, this card was seen as a bulk card and now commands over 10 plus dollars each at the time of this recording and shows no sign of slowing down. Number six on our list is Curse Totem. This card costs two for an artifact that reads, Activated abilities of creatures can't be activated. This card not only stops some of the premier commanders in our format, looking at you Thrasios, 
but it also shuts down mana dorks as well. It blanket stops all activated abilities of creatures and is at an extremely low CMC. I was actually surprised this wasn't on the reserve list as many cards that are similar to it, like Null Rod, are on the reserve list. This card has only seen two printings ever, with its last printing being in 1999. Stopping activated abilities in our format is a silver bullet and not much else can do it at this cost. Number 5 on our list is Carpet of Flowers. This card is one green for an enchantment that reads, At the beginning of each of your main phases, if you haven't added mana with this ability this turn, you may add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. This card is a great one drop in our format because of the heavy presence of blue. You are pretty much guaranteed to hit with this card and it does so much for you in the early game. Now you might be saying, but wait, this card was recently printed in Mystery Booster. And you would be correct. Except Mystery Booster's print run was cut short because of the pandemic and Mystery Booster's set size was over 1600 plus cards, meaning that these weren't exactly printed into the ground. As a result, they didn't really do much to lower the price of this highly sought after card. Number 4 on our list is Tarnished Citadel. This card is a land that reads, tap to add colorless, or tap to add one mana of any color. Tarnished Citadel deals 3 damage to you. Out of all the rainbow lands, this is probably one of the worst. It does enter untapped and can be tapped for any color immediately. However, since we have such a great need for colors in 5 color decks, as well as this being a singleton format, we have to take all the versatile lands that we can get. This land has only seen one printing ever in Odyssey back in 2001, and the demand for rainbow lands has grown a lot since then. Number 3 on our list is Gemstone Caverns. This card is a legendary land that reads, if Gemstone Caverns is in your opening hand and you're not playing first, you may begin the game with Gemstone Caverns on the battlefield with a luck counter on it. If you do, exile a card from your hand. It also reads, tap to add colorless. If Gemstone Caverns has a luck counter on it, instead add one mana of any color. There are very few cards that have ever been printed that have these types of pre-game actions. Things like the Ley Lines and this card have such powerful effects because of this. This card was printed only one time back in Time Spiral, and that allows you to essentially ramp in colors that would otherwise never allow that. This card was also what caused the infamous Turn Zero Wins back in the day as well. It's a great card that belongs in just about every CEDH deck. Its current price also reflects that, unfortunately. Number two on our list is Tainted Pact. This card is one in a black for an instant that reads, Exile the top card of your library. You may put that card into your hand unless it has the same name as another card exiled this way. Repeat this process until you put a card into your hand or you exile two cards with the same name, whichever comes first. This card is also another card that allows you to easily exile your whole library to enable a fast win. Remember when we talked about Tarnished Citadel earlier? Part of the reason that card is used was because of this card. You have to have 100 cards with unique names, including basic lands, in order for this card to work. This card used to be a 50 cent bulk rare less than two years ago and is now commanding over $60 at the time of this recording. It has only seen one printing ever, once again, in Odyssey. As long as the demand to exile your library remains the most efficient win con in CEDH, this card will continue to climb. Finally, number one on our list is Imperial Seal. Imperial Seal is one black for a sorcery that reads, search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. You lose two life. So why is this card so great when Vampiric Tutor does the same thing at instant speed? Simple. This is a singleton format, and the efficiency of a one-mana tutor, regardless of speed, is still a great card. This has had only one effective printing, aside from the Judge promo, and that was the exceptionally rare Portal 3 Kingdoms. Quick fun fact about the set, it was printed primarily to engage the Asian markets into Magic the Gathering, which is why the set has an oriental theme. Furthermore, more of the Portal 3 Kingdoms cards were actually printed in localized languages, such as Japanese, and therefore, there are more of them available in those languages. It's actually the English printing that commands even higher prices because of the limited runs in New Zealand and Australia. All that being said, this card commands hundreds of dollars and desperately needs a reprint. We've recently seen the printing of Grim Tutor in Core 2021, so we know that Wizards can and will print otherwise scarce cards. We honestly feel that a reprint of this card is on the horizon, or at least we certainly hope. Well there you have it, our picks for the top 10 CEDH cards that desperately need a reprint. 
While there are, of course, many more cards that could be on this list, we wanted to hear from you. What cards do you feel needed to be reprinted in CEDH? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.